In the current Chinese Air Force, the JH-7 seems to be a very embarrassing role with the service of J-10, J-16 and J-20 fighters. Its inferiority in performance has become more and more obvious. For example, the maximum speed of the Chinese J-11 can reach Mach 2.35 but the maximum speed of the JH-7 is only Mach 1.75. In terms of maneuverability, China's third-generation aircraft, the J-10 series, is also stronger than the JH-7, not to mention fighters such as the J-11 and J-20. So with the JH-7's performance indicators already lagging behind, why does China continue to serve the JH-7? In the current Chinese Air Force, the JH-7 has two main roles. One is to carry out anti-ship missions, and the other is to undertake ground attack missions. In terms of anti-ship, JH-7 is a relatively low-cost weapon with excellent anti-ship capability. The cost of JH-7 is lower than that of Boom-6, J-16 and other fighters. So it is cost-effective for JH-7 to carry out the anti-ship mission by mounting anti-ship missiles. At the same time, the JH-7's anti-ship capability is not weak it can reach a combat radius of more than 1,600 kilometers and can mount anti-ship missiles such as Hawk-12 and Hawk-83. The volume of these anti-ship missiles is enough to hit 4,000 tons of frigates. Even against carriers can also make it lose combat effectiveness for a period of time. After all, the carrier is a sea airport. Once the runway is destroyed, then basically also lost the ability to take off and land carrier aircraft. In other words, if the JH-7 can close in on an enemy carrier and launch anti-ship missiles onto its flight deck, it can render the carrier incapacitated for a certain period of time. Currently China has about 200 JH-7s in service, and these JH-7s are a formidable anti-ship force that can't be underestimated, and once assembled, even the US carrier strike force which consists of two to three carriers, will have to back off. And at the current stage China also needs a large number of anti-ship forces. Because the size of the Chinese Navy is not as large as the United States, the need for the Air Force to JH-7 as the first anti-ship platform to undertake a certain amount of anti-ship tasks. When the size of the Chinese Navy exceeds that of the United States in the future, the Chinese Navy has really become an ocean-going navy. The role of the JH-7 in the field of anti-ship will disappear completely. In addition, the JH-7 has a unique advantage over other Chinese anti-ship forces, such as the Dongfeng-26 anti-ship ballistic missile, and that is the deterrent capability. Not only is an anti-ship missile like the Dongfeng-26 expensive, but it only has two options, launch and no launch. When the Dongfeng-26 is not launched, it cannot act as a deterrent to the U.S. Navy. But the Dongfeng-26 launched not only to use up a missile, you have to hit the U.S. warships. If you use the Dongfeng-26 missiles, hit the water is also very difficult to the U.S. warships to produce enough deterrence. But JH-7 is different. It mounted anti-ship missiles continuously follow the U.S. warships. The U.S. warships can produce a continuous deterrent. At this time, the U.S. Warships can either shoot down the Chinese JH-7 fighters to aggravate the situation, or they can only choose to leave. So when the U.S. fleet enters China's neighboring waters, and China needs to carry out a removal mission, or when China is facing some other situation that requires military force to confront a hostile country's warships, the JH-7's role is greater than that of the Dongfeng-26 missile. As for ground strike capability, it comes down to a special class of fighters the ground attack aircraft. The United States has a 10 this kind of ground attack aircraft can be in their own side to obtain the right to control the air in the case of the enemy's ground armed forces for fire suppression, especially in large regimental combat. The suppression power of the ground attack aircraft can be called the aerial butcher. China's ground attack aircraft is the JH-7, which can mount a large number of rockets and aerial bombs to hit ground targets at low cost. The JH-7 also has a speed advantage over the American A-10. The maximum speed of the American A-10 ground attack aircraft is only about 830 km per hour, or less than Mach 0.7. But the Chinese JH-7 can reach a maximum speed of Mach 1.7, significantly faster than the A-10. But the Chinese JH-7 can reach a maximum speed of Mach 1.7, significantly higher than that of the A-10. 
and its higher speed makes it less likely to be shot down by a manned portable anti-aircraft missile like the Stinger. Although the JH-7 has sacrificed its load capacity to gain speed and is not as capable of sustained suppression of ground targets as the A-10, its survivability far exceeds that of the A-10 and the JH-7's disadvantage in load capacity can be made up for by sheer numbers, as there are still about 200 JH-7s in China, enough to play a role in large-scale battles at the group army level. Of course, with the passage of time, the JH-7 will be gradually retired. The main reason behind this is that the role of the J-16 covers the positioning of the JH-7. The JH-7 is an anti-ship platform plus ground attack aircraft positioning but these combat tasks J-16 can also do. And compared to the JH-7, the J-16 is stronger in terms of performance indicators and can do these tasks better. Against the J-16, the biggest advantage of the JH-7 is the low cost of use. In addition, the current number of J-16 fighters is also small, with the total number adding up to perhaps only 300 or so. When the J-16s have to take on other missions in various aspects of China, there won't be enough J-16S to take on any ship and ground strike missions. So at this stage, 200 J-H-7S are still important, but the number of J-16 fighters in service is going to be boosted. Currently, it is widely believed that China's annual production capacity of J-16 has reached about 70 aircraft, and in a few more years, the number of J-16S will be enough for all aspects of China's use. And with the expansion of J-16 production, the production cost of this fighter will be lower and lower. After all, the big part of the cost of the warplane is in the design and construction of the production line, and any weapon with the increase in the number of production, these costs will be diluted, and its cost will only get lower and lower. And J-16S do age. Some of the J-16S that have been in service long enough will be worth less. At that time, these aging J-16S will be able to do anti-ship and ground attack work. Therefore, the eventual retirement of the JH-7 is basically doomed.